Tonight on the WHAS 1119, a staple in Louisville's West End is back, the Dirt Bowl. The beloved annual basketball tournament is starting under a different tone this year. I mean, it didn't feel right, you know, not coming whether he's here or not, because if he was here, I would still be here. How tournament organizers are remembering one of the Dirt Bowl's brightest young players, weeks after his untimely death. And we're taking you back to New Orleans in a WHAS 11 series exclusive. what the Derby City can learn from the Big Easy as we prepare to navigate a consent decree. Plus, we're on the cusp of Juneteenth, how Jeffersonville is celebrating the holiday. That and more right now on the WHAS 1119. One of Louisville's longest running basketball tournaments, a co community cornerstone in the West End, has returned to Shawnee Park. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bobby McSwine. While excitement filled the courts, it was coupled with a sense of deep loss. Connor Steffen was there as Dirt Bowl organizers honored one of their brightest young players, killed in a car crash just weeks ago. The passion atop the Dirt Bowl courts in Shawnee Park was palpable. Fun. It's basketball. It's cool. It's it's action. It's the dirt ball. All uh, right. Uh, this year we should be real, real good, and things are looking up for the dirt ball. But with all the excitement came a moment of pause. Can we please be respectful and have a quick moment of silence to remember what and who is missing from the dirt ball blacktop? And I just want to say to the family, all of us here, we understand and we feel your sympathy, your grief. Two weeks ago, 24-year-old Javen Russian was gearing up for a breakout Dirt Bowl season. Now the Russian family is finalizing his burial plans. We were all saddened by the untimely demise of Javen, especially the way that it happened. Russian died in a car crash that injured four others on June 3rd. Police say the driver, 24-year-old Daniel Bell, hit speeds of 100 miles an hour before losing control. An investigation found Bell's blood alcohol level was more than double the legal driving limit. When you can prevent something uh, to avoid these type of situations, I definitely strongly encourage you that you prevent them. We always have a designated driver as someone that's not going to get drunk and drive. Javen's father, Jason Russian, has been a longtime fixture in the Dirt Bowl tournament. Jason Russian is the first ballot Hall of Famer. He spent this Father's Day clutching tight the jersey Javen would have worn, playing on the team coached by his father. It's going to maintain companionship and unity. And uh, that's all me and Javen talked about was getting ready for the Dirt Bowl, us not practicing last year and not finishing up what we came to do. He's now set to do that without his son, but still for his son with the backing of the entire Dirt Bowl community. The Dirt Bowl is a family, no matter what team you play on. Competitors on the court and family off the court, remembering one of its brightest young players gone too soon. In Shawnee Park, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 11 night team on your side. Kentucky State Police are investigating a possible murder-suicide in Hardin County. KSP says just before 2 a.m. yesterday, Vine Grove Police responded to a welfare check on Edgebrook Edgebrook Drive. When officers arrived, they found the bodies of a husband and wife. Investigators believe the man shot his wife before turning the weapon on himself. Both died at the scene and the investigation is ongoing. And back here in Louisville, a man is dead after a shooting in Wilder Park. LMPD responded last night around 1015 to South 3rd Street near West Whitney Avenue, not far from Southern Parkway in the 3rd Street Kroger. When officers arrived, they found a man who had been shot. He was transported to the hospital where he later died of his injuries. And police are searching for the driver of a motorcycle after a fatal crash in Smoketown today. LMPD says about 430 this afternoon, they responded to the crash at at the intersection of Preston Street and Jacob Street. Investigators say two people were on a motorcycle traveling south when the driver lost control of the motorcycle crashing. The passenger received fatal injuries and was pronounced dead on the scene. Meanwhile, witnesses tell police that the driver fled the scene in an unknown car. Anyone with information about any of these events is encouraged to call the anonymous tip line. That's 574-LMPD. Well, June 10th, Juneteenth celebration in, in Illinois, a music festival in Washington State, and a party in St. Louis all turning deadly over the weekend when gunfire erupted. At least four people killed in the violence, dozens more injured. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. The violence unfolding over the weekend. Three more mass shootings that left four people dead. 
In Willowbrook, Illinois, a Juneteenth celebration ending in chaos. We just started her to shoot a cop in front behind us, so we dropped down. It was chaos. At least 22 people shot, one of them fatally. It's kind of becoming something where it's like inescapable. Police say they do not know how many suspects or firearms were involved. The motive behind this incident is unclear, and this is still an active investigation. In St. Louis, Missouri, a 17-year-old killed. Nine other teens injured when a gunman opened fire at a party on the fifth floor of this office building. Ages 15 to 19, 1 o'clock in the morning in an office building that we're trying to figure out who had authority to it. And in Washington state, at least two people were killed and three others injured, including the alleged gunman, in a shooting near the Beyond Wonderland Electronic Dance Music Festival. Active shooting at Gorge Amphitheater. I'm not requesting any state assistance. According to the sheriff's office, the suspected shooter walked away from the scene before officers tracked him down. The shooter continued to shoot randomly into the crowd and the suspect was eventually taken into custody. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been at least 310 mass shootings across the country so far this year, which have resulted in the deaths of more than 820 kids aged 17 and under. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Kentucky's child care landscape is in turmoil and has been for years. A new report shows it's not getting much better. The 2023 Kids Count data book lists Kentucky trailing far behind most states in the country. Kentucky ranks 40th in overall child well-being, well-being and 41st in economic well-being. The Commonwealth also ranks 40th in health and 42nd in family and community. The highest ranking for Kentucky is in education, where it sits 29th in the country. The executive Executive Director of Kentucky Youth Advocates says this report suggests Kentucky is failing its kids. When you look at the, the trajectories of so many issues, whether they're economic well-being or education, what you see is a decline. Uh, the last few years, I, I have to say that while we may not have been where we wanted to be, we were headed in the right direction. Terry Brooks says he wants to see more emphasis placed on children's development in the General Assembly and even in the current gubernatorial race. Well, this week, Mayor Craig Greenberg announced he would not be waiting on the General Assembly to act and is hoping to act sooner on early development. The mayor announcing an early childhood learning task force. The group will work with the mayor to develop concrete plans and policies for in implementing crucial and accessible early learning programs. The group, which will meet biweekly for six months, will develop a plan to help bring pre-K and early learning options to children across the community. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And today, our village is coming together to raise up our children, and in doing so, raise up the future of our city. Even before I was a mom of preschool age kids, I knew the numbers. I knew the studies the mayor just quoted. Data shows that kids who have access to preschool are less likely to be suspended from school, to skip class, to become justice involved. The Early Learning Action Group is comprised of leaders from across Louisville representing education, workforce development, nonprofits, and multiple levels of government. The members were chosen for their expertise in the fields and their understanding of the importance of providing foundational learning to children prior to entering kindergarten. Well, Juneteenth is tomorrow, and the party got started early across the river in Jeffersonville. Jeffersonville was good! The Jammin and Jeff Juneteenth celebration brought out the big names to celebrate the holiday. Thousands packed the park to see headliner Lil Jon. People, people there say the concert means so much to them. It means a lot. It means a lot. It means that the city cares about it. It cares about getting us out together, getting these beautiful black people out and uh, celebrating a, a holiday that's most needed. I look forward to next year, see what we do bigger than this, you know, see if we get something else, maybe a multi-superstar show, um, another free concert, keep it nice and safe, got the kids out here. The concert tonight was free and open to the public.